Hi guys, I'm Sean from Play by Pause and today we're going to have a color grading tutorial. So some of you guys has been asking me how do I color grade my own footage and today this video I'm going to show you some of my basic color grading workflow and I think it works for me and I hope it works for you too. First off, I just want to say I'm not a professional colorist but I do color grade my own footage using software like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve but mostly uh, Premiere Pro. I know Premiere Pro is not the best color grading software out there but it's pretty much good enough for what I'm doing and because I always prefer to get everything right in front of camera so that I don't really need to do a lot of heavy pose or heavy color grading in pose and I think it's a good way to do that because you always uh, train yourself to get everything right in front of camera. So yeah, that's the whole reason why I use Premiere Pro more than uh, DaVinci Resolve. Before we jump into the color gradings, uh, some disclosure. So I believe some of you guys already know I'm a Sony user. I use a lot of Sony color profiles because I use A7S III, A7S III, A7S III for my projects. And the color profile that I always use is HLG3 uh, BT2020. So I don't really use SLOG3 that much because HLG3 is great. It has a great color, great dynamic range. Um, there's tons of colors going on and it looks good straight out of camera. So that's one of the reasons why I use HLG3 compared to uh, SLOG3. So this is just my personal preference. You can use any color profile or any camera. And this tutorial is going to be universal. It's applicable for any profiles. And that's the whole reason of having this tutorial because I want to share the fundamental or the basics of color gradings. For starters, I believe uh, the 101 mistakes I used to have is finding the colors that you want or the mood that you want. Um, understand that it can be quite lost when you're starting your color gradings because you have no idea what to do and what kind of mood that you want. So my suggestion would be just find a reference. It can be a still, it can be a video, anything. As long as there's a guideline for you so that you know what you're trying to do or what you're trying to achieve at the end of the day. And I believe that you will eventually start to have your own style or own color palette once you have worked a lot, practice a lot along the way. So it's okay to get a color reference. So not to worry about that. Just get some color reference and eventually you'll get what you want at the end of the day. So I already created um, the final looks that I want beforehand. Uh, so I'm going to use this as a color reference. But like I say, you can use any reference you want. So first off, um, I'm in a color windows and this works for me as in terms of color grading, you can use any uh, interface, you can customize any how you want, um, as long as it's comfortable for you and it works for you. So just a quick explanation of what I have right here. I have a project and effects at the left side and I have two uh, monitor. One is a reference monitor, another is the active or program monitor, which related to your timeline. And uh, next up is effects and lumetri color. Next up is effects and lumetri colors, uh, which is the, one of the most important things in color grading. The, another thing is lumetri scopes, which involve waveform and vector scopes. And of course, we have the timeline at the below of the edits. So that's pretty much it. So first off, I'll just scrub through my timeline. So this is a project that I filmed a long time ago. It's a wedding project. Um, I'm going to use this as today's exercise. So the reason why I'm scrubbing through my footage is to find the very first shot to color grade so that I, we have a main reference in futures. So I'm going to use these shots in states because um, of course it's same as the reference. Another thing is these shots, we have pretty much a lot of colors in here. We have skin tone, we have the skies, which is blue color. And of course we have some green grass behind. So you can find a lot of color in these particular clips. As you can see right here, I'm using HLG3 and the colors straight out of the camera just looks beautiful. And uh, this is why I like HLG because it, everything looks good in front of cameras. You save tons of books and give you a lot of uh, dynamic range in these shots. As you can see at the um, 
waveform right here. There's a lot of color right here. So before we do any color gradings, we need to go through a process called color balance or color corrections. So what's the difference between color corrections and color gradings? So color grading is the fun part where you give a look, some treatments, some moods to your clips. So that's the fun part. As for color uh, corrections or balancing is the boring part. This is the, because we have a lot of cameras, settings out there that's using different lenses in our edits. So I'm sure that all the colors will be very different. The exposure will be different uh, from each clips. So this color balance is to help you to balance all the clips together so that you can have a very consistent look throughout the whole edits. Let's start with the first shots. Normally, I'll just balance my shots using basic corrections only because uh, I prefer numbers instead of a curve. Uh, I just think it's much more easier and much more accurate, I would say. So first thing I would like to do is um, I want my black and white at the point where it should be. So let's start with maybe blacks. We're going to move the blacks a little bit more towards left so that our black is not into zero, close to zero. And then same goes to white. I don't know. I'm going to tune down the exposure somewhere around 80 to 90. That's what I prefer. White, I can maybe just touch a bit of white, just go a little bit down. I'm going to sum the numbers up so it's much more easier. Uh, if I want to trick again, and next I'm going to play with the highlight. It seems like there's some highlights. It looks clipping over there, but I just pull down slightly, but not too much because you do, do not want to create an HDR look. So the whole purpose of just pull down the highlight is just to give a bit of smooth roll off from the highlight and the shadow. So just a little bit touch is good. Negative 11 looks good to me. So next up, maybe I just put down a shadow slightly. So before, after. The shot looks pretty balanced right now. Nothing is by balance. So as you can see right here, there's a lot of blue at the sky, which makes complete sense. But you do realize there's this part. This part is this guy. So there's a lot of white here and you can, as you can see from here, there's a lot, there's some blue right here in the white. So what I'm going to do is you can either just color pick, which I don't really like it. So another way is just do it by yourself. I'm going to reduce some of the blue, not too much and, re and add on some green. So even though it's not a lot, 4 and minus 2 for the team, but it do make a difference. So right now the white is almost white, the black is black. Looks good. So before, after. Everything looks good. Let's proceed to the fun part and creative parts, which is color gradings. So there's two ways of doing it. You can either just um, go to effect control, find a, sorry, find a Lumetri colors, just drag and drops. So this is the basic color corrections that you did just now. And this is the new color grading uh, layers. Um, this is one of the way, but I don't prefer this way because let me show you the second methods. So the second method is, I'm going to just delete like this. The second method is I'm going to drop this adjustment layer on top of my edits. And then I'm just going to extend it throughout the whole edits. So the whole idea of doing this method is to make your life much easier and faster. This might not be an every one move, but it works for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the color grading or add the adjustment layer instead of the clips itself. Since the clip itself, I'm just, just going to focus on the color balance. So adjustment layer is more towards color grading. So let's do the color grading at the adjustment layers. Um, so let's start with the metric color. So since I already have the reference colors, like what I see, reference colors is very important. And so right starts with this, um, I'm going to skip basic color corrections because when it comes to color grading, I love to use color wheels. So this is where the magic happens because you can create a lot of possibility in the color wheels. There's so many things right here. 
um, you have shadow, you have mid-tone, you have highlights, and there's a variety of colors that you can play around. So as you can see from the reference, it seems a very warmish kind of looks. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna push a little bit of warm, red or yellows at the highlights, just a little bit. And as for mid-tone, uh, I will just go towards red. So mid-tones, normally skin tones will fall at the mid-tone. So I like to push the mid-tone slightly to the red so that I just give, give a little bit of red to add the skin tone. And as for shadow, I will just move towards warm as well. Maybe the highlight will just move towards slightly green. Just a little bit green. Okay, so what you can see right now is I feel that the whole shot is a little bit too saturated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to desaturate the shot slightly. Uh, I'm going to go to creative. So in creative, there's two things right here, vibrance and saturations. So both of them are very similar. So the difference between these two is saturations is to give more dark color data or remove color data throughout the whole image. As for vibrance, it's much more, much more, it's smarter, I would say. So it affects the color of the image, except the skin tone. So I'm going to show you what I'm trying to say. So if let's say I'm desaturating the whole thing, you can see right here, everything is removed except the skin tone. Okay, so this proven that the vibrance is affecting most of the thing except the warm of the skin tone. So what I'm going to do, I'm just go back to zero. I'm just going to tone down maybe negative 20 or 30. Just let's say 20. Let's say it's a before and after. We can see that the whole shot is slightly deset right now, which is good. I think, you know what, let's go back to color wheel and just tone down the mid-tone slightly. Because I felt that the whole shot is a little bit too warm. Same goes to shadows. Right, looks good. So we're gonna leave it right now where we have. So this is the second last that I like to do, which is curve. So curve is, to me, the curve is a hate and love relationship because curve is very strong, um, but it's very, and also very sensitive, but it's not that easy to use, especially when you do not have the color panels. Color panels is, is, is something that the colorist will have, but for normal use, I don't think you will have a color palette in your hands. But it's okay, you still can use curve, just that you have to be very uh, careful and be very patient with it. So normally, I will just do three points, create three points, and then I'm going to pull my mid shadow, I will just say mid shadows, slightly lower, just to give a little bit of contrast, on, just to make the shot a little bit more solid and also push the black towards right so that my black is a little bit more black. So it's pretty similar to the reference photo right now. Let's go down the whites. So what I like to do with the highlight is I'm going to push the white slightly down so that my white is not completely white, it's slightly grayish so that the shot looks a little bit more flattening, which I think it works for weddings projects. So I think it's pretty good so on off so the whole shot looks much more solid looks much more pop i want to tweak a little bit more let me just go back to my basic corrections and tone down the highlight a little bit more and also white just to make it similar to the reference all right so Let's get back to the color grain. So we pretty much hit before, after. Looks good. So let's let's move on to the next clips. Uh, for the next clip, I will probably pick an indoor shot uh, because since already graded first outdoor shots, I think it would be nice to have an indoor shot so that we have a indoor reference for the rest of the edits. I'm gonna pick these shots. I think it just looks beautiful. Uh, this is gonna be a bright feature shot. Um, First thing first, I'm going to turn off my adjustment layer for the color grading so that I won't uh, accidentally uh, color correct my adjustment layer when I'm doing the color balance process. 
Uh, so same thing, I'm just going to my do battery color. So when it comes to color corrections, I will always use basic corrections. So let's get started with it. Same thing, I'm gonna go to basic corrections, push down my black, not too much. Somewhere here is good. Next, push my highlight a little bit down and of course exposure around 80 to 90. And then of course white, let's go to maybe negative five. Somewhere here looks good. Shadow wise, let's go down slightly somewhere, maybe negative 10. Let's sum all the number up. Things like that. So right now it looks okay. Let's talk about white balance. Uh, it looks pretty decent to me, honestly. Uh, so I don't think I'm gonna move a lot. Maybe just a little bit of red because just now there's a little bit too much of blue right here. So I'm just add a little bit of warm and also a tint of purple just to balance a little bit better. So before, after, maybe back a bit of green. Sorry about that. So next thing that I realized is this shot seems a bit desaturated uh, when it compares to the first scene that we grid. As you can see here, you can easily notice it from the vector scopes right here. So just look at it. So you can see there's a little bit more colors at the first clip when we compare side by side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some saturations, maybe 130. So right now, when it compares to an, the first clip, it looks much better. Very similar, which is good. Okay, so it's the magic part where you have to turn on the color grading and wow, it just looks amazing. So it looks very similar to the first scenes that we did. We have a very similar colors, well balanced and yeah, it just looks amazing. As you can see, using this method is much faster uh, compared to adding color grading for each scenes uh, and that's the reason why I prefer using these methods. It might not be the most proper way of doing it but I think this is much more efficient uh, and it's much more handful for a, for a long edits like this. Okay so right now let's move on to the next clips. Let's pick something a bit harder. I'm gonna pick the wedding ceremony. So we have three clips over here. One, two, three. So we have three clips over here. Let me turn off the adjustment layer and lock it. So we have three clips over here, the, the white shots, I would say, and then the groom, and then the bright shots. But all of them shot in three different camera, three different lens, slightly different, ex different exposure, and maybe different white balance sometimes. We're going to start to balance the first shots of the wedding ceremony. Let's see before and after, it looks pretty good. Let's turn on the color grading and see how it turns out. Honestly, it looks pretty good. Let's use this as a reference shot since this is an indoor, which is similar to the wedding ceremony. I think it's a much fairer comparison. So when we go one six, so go to here. So what I realized with this shot is there's some green and yellow cast at skin tone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock this uh, color grading layer, move to the bed, move to the footage itself because the green and yellow cast happens at the individual clips. So I'm gonna correct the individual clips instead of the color grading layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to curve scroll down to hue versus hue, click the color pick and choose somewhere around here maybe. So I'm gonna move my skin, the yellow part slightly towards red. So before, after, as you can see, 
the green cast is removed easily. You can widen these parts so that affects a little bit more towards the yellow. Yeah. So before, after, before. There's a subtle difference which is good enough. This is a little bit more if you want. So right now, before, after, before, after. As you can see, a simple steps can make a big difference sometimes. So right now, we pretty much have the first wedding ceremony shots. It looks lovely to me. So what I'm going to do is copy the Lumetri color and paste. As you can see, it looks pretty similar. But oh, before that, I'm going to switch my reference monitor to the same to my first ceremony somewhere here 06 so I'm going to switch to my second shots so I kind of copy paste the shots there's a little bit difference but not a huge difference so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my grading layer and I'm going to balance this shot as well So what I feel it can be improved is the skins, the, the face of the groom looks a bit dark. So what we can do is add on another lumetric color on top of it, right? And create a mask at the groom face. Feather it into to 300%. Oh, not too much. Sorry, my bad. 150%. Turn it down slightly. We just kind of scrub through the footage. It seems that there's not much movement going on, so we can just skip the tracking process. So go back to romantic color and basic corrections. Just give a little bit of exposures onto his face. And looks much more consistent. So let's move on to the third clips, which is the bright shots. So overall, we kind of get a very consistent look throughout the whole wedding ceremony, even though we have three different camera. Uh, it's pretty easy, like what I did, one color grading layer on top of everything, and then just balance each shot so that it have a more consistent looks throughout the whole edit. Let's apply all the color gradings throughout the whole edits and see how it turns out. Carry with me a part of us There's nothing I could do or have ever done could bring me closer to being known The one we all long to be Dear Kelton, I'm always grateful that we found each other in this big crazy world. You've brought joy even on my most moodiest of days. And most of all, you have loved me for all that I am and all that I will be. I don't think I say it enough, but do you know that I love you more than words can ever say, truly, deeply, infinitely. So there you have it. Hope you guys enjoy this video with me. I do enjoy these sessions because I kind of learn one or two things even though I've done this countless time. And I must say, color grading is, is some sort of marathon. You kind of, uh, you have to find the style that you want, practice, try and error, and eventually you'll be good at it and you know what you want. So I hope this video is helpful for you and you kind of learn something from it. And as always, Krill and have fun. I'll see you guys in the next video.